God bless. The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views of WSIC. All systems are a go. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. Taking care of Iredell with North Carolina State Representative Jeff McNeely is about to begin in five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, Iredell County. Hope everybody's doing well out there this morning. It's a little brisk, but it turned out to be a real nice day. It looks like you can get out and get some work done. As my grandfather would always say, time to go, time to go. Hey, we got a good show today. Got uh, Addison McDowell going to call in the second part of the show. Some of y'all may know him, some of you may not. Uh, to me, he's a newly elected congressman from over Davison County. Uh, so uh, be good to have him on there. He's going to talk to us. That could have been a potential runoff in the 6th District, but it wasn't. So he'll be coming in on the, the second part of the show. Uh, right off the get-go, we'd like to say congratulations to my Wolf Pack, Go Pack, uh, going to Dallas to play Marquette at 7 p.m. I think it's on Friday. So looking forward to that. Also, congratulations to UNC Duke and Clemson. We got four out of the 16 uh, teams there. And if I do my math right, that's 25%, which is pretty good considering we didn't get but five bids total. So, hmm, maybe maybe ACC conference not dead in basketball yet as the national pundits would have us. So, anyway, well, let's jump right into it. Anybody wants to call in, 844 788 3464 844-788-3464. I know the number's a little different, but hey, we're working with it. So good news, uh, our congressional leaders, uh, led by Richard Hudson and Tom Tillis, uh, and also Ted Budd, have been doing some investigating into that youth um, immigrant center, we'll call it. I think the official name they go by is uh, F. Uh, ICF, Influx Care Facility over in Greensboro. And y'all may remember this. I talked about this probably a couple months ago now, how there was a, a Jewish uh, school, I think uh, K-12, that uh, be a private school that was built, a campus, and that didn't work out. And so somehow or another it went into receivership. And next thing you know, uh, our federal government has uh, wrote up a contract with a company, and now the company's changed names again. So it gets really confusing. Uh, but it was a five-year, nearly $50 million contract with the effective start date of June 2022. Uh, yet only thing really we've seen there is security personnel, and that contract's getting to be about two years old now. Uh, real weird, also the Greensboro mayor announced on, on Twitter, or X as we'll call it, that the, uh, uh, make sure I got my acronyms right, ICF, uh, was uh, open and operational, and that was on March the 15th. She, she put that out. So uh, a lot of weird things going on. This is for, once again, unaccompanied illegal immigrant minors coming across our border being housed here. Don't know if any of them are yet, but we're already paying for it. And, you know, the real estate records show that $26 million loan document for the AHA campus, that's one of the names, was assigned by uh, Faxum Limited to Metabroad International Group, LLC, and High E Holdings LP. All three companies appear to have some connection to China. With the Paxson CFO, Ping Wang, e e executing his side of the loan document at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, China. Uh, Tillis and Bud have also recently introduced a pair of bills intending to crack down on sanctuary cities and incentivize deport deportation of illegal uh, criminal aliens in our country so here we've got a facility in north carolina that is going to be used it appears and ready to go whether any of them show up yet or not and already being paid for to house unaccompanied uh illegal immigrant minors that are crossing the border this is very complicated if you ask me so uh and very troublesome we wonder where our money goes and everybody always talks about this we have not found any state funding whatsoever on this at all. Like I said, if anybody wants to call and talk about this or anything else, 
844-788-3464. Love to hear from you. Here we have uh, Tillis going, and, and a quote that I've got is, uh, uh, for, for too long we have watched local jurisdictions in North Carolina and across, across the country ignore the lawful notification and detainer requests made by ICE agents, which is your immigration, instead of uh, releasing uh, dangerous criminals back into the community and putting innocent lives at risk, Tillis said in a statement. It is clear President Biden and the liberal politicians want to prioritize reckless sanctuary policies over public safety. It is time for Congress to step in and put an end to this madness by holding sanctuary cities accountable and empowering ICE to gain custody of criminal illegal immigrants so that they can, um, can't cause any more harm or violence. Ted Budd also put into this, this is a matter of public safety and rule of law, Budd said. At the time when the Biden administration refuses to crack down on sanctuary cities, Congress has the responsibility to act. It's long past time that cities who refuse to enforce our immigration laws face legal consequences. When laws are not enforced completely, uh, preventable tragedies occur. This is this has to stop. So Bud and Tillis are heading up this effort to that will put lawless cities on notice and will incentivize them to enforce our laws and keep our streets safe. Take a sip of water, folks. Long reading. So this has been going on for a while, since 22. It continues to go on. We continue to pay money. Even if you're on the side that you want these children looked after when they cross the border unaccompanied, which that kind of concerns me on multiple areas, you're not getting that either. Neither side's winning here. All I see is we're spending money on a facility. Nobody's at it. But yet somebody could come, which means it's a sanctuary part of a city of Greensboro, so which we totally said in in the state house and also now pushing forward in the federal houses, uh, Senate and, and House both of representatives. This is something we don't want. We don't want this in North Carolina. We don't want this in the United States. It, we're we're contracting facilities for a problem that should never happen if we stop them from crossing our border. And once again, it goes back to the old adage of hitting yourself in the head with a hammer and taking aspirin for the headache. Uh, do you find a better deal on aspirin, or do you quit hitting yourself in the head with a hammer? It looks like we have a hard time saying, don't hit me in the head with a hammer. We continue to do it constantly as a government, as a nation. This really concerns me, folks. So we're getting ready to go to our quarter break on the hour, but so much is going on here. And this is so close to home. This is right here, Addison, Greensboro. And you look like you have one side, the city over there, wanting this, playing this, uh, doing everything they can, announcing the opening of it, you know, and then it's ready to go. All the hurdles have been uh, jumped, and, and here we are. And next thing you know, uh, like I said, we're seeing money. We're seeing all these things. Nobody has notified the state of North Carolina in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, they've notified the city of Greensboro, but they have yet to notify anybody on our side. We have to find these things out through back doors. That's not the way it should be. There should be transparency. There should be the ability to know what's happening in your state, especially if you're in your congressional seats as far as our congressmen and our Senate. So this is a real problem, I think. To me, it looks like a total cover-up. And, and I have a real problem with that. And they wrote a letter to the Department of Health and Human Services asking Secretary Becerra uh, to, to give more information, and they have basically been st stonewalled. So we'll keep watching this situation. Hang, hang on, folks. We're going to break right now. We'll be right back. Got more to talk about. Got Addison McDowell. There's more taking care of Iredell with North Carolina Representative Jeff McNeely on the way from 105.9, 100.
100.7 WSIC. All right, back here for the kind of what I call the middle part, the meat of the show here till we get to our guest. And I think we got a caller on the line. So, Joe, let's bring him in. Hey, this is Representative Jeff McNeely. Who we got? This is Jesse. How you doing, Jesse? I'm good, Jesse. What you up to? I, 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 I got something to talk to you about, but go ahead. What you got? Well, thing, it's about time. <laughs> 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 but no, it's, uh, it's, man, there's so much to talk about. It's, uh, they just ain't enough minutes in the day, I guess, or on that show especially. What? But the, the, uh, he's talking about the, uh, taking over North Carolina like this and, and, a lot of people have been, you know, just for one thing, they're calling this like a 16-year plan that some Democrats had together or whatever. But uh, I've been paying attention to this my whole life because I've been in manufacturing my whole life, and I've seen this country gutted out, okay, during my lifetime. And I've seen it's been done strategically, okay. This stuff has been going on since the beginning of time, Jeff, basically. But... Here, this is, you take take the outer banks. I remember, I remember when it flourished with fishermen. A lot of you know people come from all over the United States to come to the outer banks to go fishing. And they 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 purposely put an end to that. And you can see over time how it's like they widened the road. There's something going on there that I can't quite put my finger on. I admit that. It's like all this stuff has been planned out for decades, decades, and and now that it's all coming together, I'm starting to see what's going on here. And it's like they are switching what used to come in on the West Coast. It looks like it's getting ready to start happening here, and uh, with all of them buying up the eastern yeah. path. Of, the, of the North Carolina's farmlands, basically. And it ain't just China, I think. I mean, I thought our Constitution is supposed to keep foreign affairs out of our country like this. Uh, that was the federalist job. Uh, and, and what can we do? I mean, we need to be having... Uh, the uh, federal indictments, uh, uh, having hearings, uh, and secret, what do you call that? Uh, secret indictments. Uh, ah. I'm not sure on that. People but, need to hear, people need to hear what's going on here to see if we don't need to be bringing indictments out on some people that has ignored their duties. Because I've seen a lot of it. I can put my finger on a lot of it. And it's just like people, I don't know, they just don't know what the Constitution is. The, uh, But there, there's like there's a lot of uh, irresponsibilities going on, you know. And it's like uh, I can kind of see why a lot of people is not standing up to it, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I... You know, what I was going to talk to you about a little bit, I'm just going to find it here. i got to uh, get it in. Uh, actually, uh, Tennessee has become like the fifth state now on this geoengineering, not to get too far uh -huh. over in the weeds or whatever. but right. and, and so there, there's a bill out there, and I'm trying to see if I can get a representative, his name's Monty Fritz, to come on my mm -hmm. show here in the next week or two and talk about it because his bill intrigues me. And I was trying right. to find... Uh, I tell you another guy that that's I call him Sky Fauci. Uh, his name is David Keith, and he's been on record on YouTube. And he's he's like a uh, he he like was heading all that stuff back when they was talking about start doing that stuff and talking about how many tons and I've got videos on top of videos of that that I can show you, but uh, it's crazy, man, on that end of things, but. They have uh, literally built 60-acre greenhouses in Tennessee and Kentucky uh, because they knew this stuff was coming, you know, and it, it seems like. I'm trying to find it here. Maybe this is it. Congrats. There's actually, yes, uh, 
Uh, all right, on uh, this is on the White House website. Congressionally mandated research plan and initial research governance framework related to solar radiation modification. So uh, this is this is actually on the website on the White House. Oh, I know. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing, if they're doing, or whatever. But there, I mean, there's yeah, actually yeah. a there's there's a division of our it, government. There's a division of yeah, our government. If, if they're not doing it all the time, what good is it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can go out here on any given day, out the day, beautiful day. They're not, they're not doing it, but you, they'll just come up out of the blue and start. Uh, just you know, uh, I've got a certain day. I've got a lot of video of that stuff saved up, but it's they'll just swamp the skies, and then two weeks later, there's all kinds of mammals and sea creatures washed up on the beach, dead, and they don't. They wonder why, you know. And at the same time, it's like when it does come in rains, man, I get into a, a, a media and a lot of people around me will go into a state of fatigue. Uh, it's like you get disoriented, and I know I'm not the only one experiencing this stuff. The, uh, this, and if you, you know, you do, do a little research on the sulfur, like they're talking about that they put in that stuff, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense why that and the, uh, the sulfur and the uh, they put in the ground for growing. Uh, I wasn't prepared Let, for this. Here, I know. Here, here's what it says on the website. It says the research plan was prepared in response to a requirement in the joint exploratory Expertorial statement accompanying Division B of the Consolidated Appropriation Act of 2022 directing the Office of Science and Technology Policy mm-hmm. with support from National or- Oceanic and Asmo- As- A- Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, to provide a research plan for solar and other rapid climate interventions. Right. Hmm. So little, little concerning there. Little concerning. Going to yeah. see if we can get Monty yeah. on here. Uh, you know, right. the, the kicker is we don't know what they're doing, but this sort That's of gives right. this gives you a, a department, a division that actually mm-hmm. could do something, which tells me if they could do something, there's a good chance they might be doing something. And and and, and at least let the people know what's going on, so we can take measures to. Yeah. Defend ourselves or something. <laughs> if you if you're gonna put something in there, I think you need to be having disclosure and telling me. So that anyway, David, but that, we'll, that David Keith is openly talking about how many millions of people it's gonna kill. This is ten years ago, okay? And it's, it's sad, man. But anyway. We'll, I'll let you continue to show you. Yeah, but we'll get into this, hopefully, and that'll be an interesting show. So just, just yeah. hang tight, as they say, hang tight. Oh, yeah. All right, man, Thanks, be good. Bud. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, something that I did want to really bring up to today also, along with that, what's going on in Greensboro is, um, so Senator Chuck Schumer gives a speech on the Senate floor last week uh, that called for the, um, and i got to make sure I, Say this, um, Netanyahu, Netanyahu government, that's the Israeli government, to come to an end. It's time for a new regime to take its place. So now you have the highest ranking Jewish elected official in the United States just did the Biden administration's dirty work, folks, if you don't see what's going on. So a wedge with Chuck Schumer leading the charge has been driven between the U.S. Jews and now the uh, Israeli Jews. And, and this is an attempt to keep the Muslims in the Democratic Party because they're having problems there. So uh, be- before it's over, uh, or by the Democratic Convention, they, they will abandon Israel. You, the Biden administration will abandon Israel in their, their, their fight to get rid of Hamas. And, and it's all about politics and, and damage control. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with what should be done. And yes, there's there's genocide going on in Hamas, and there's it's bad conditions. I still say before October seventh, maybe things weren't great, but this wasn't going on. Uh, this is what happens when you attack somebody, a sovereign nation, and they uh, reply for that attack in the, the swiftest uh, way they know how. And this is what's happening. So, uh, 
you know, shame on Chuck Schumer for selling out his own people. Biden is also using, at the same time, their administration, the UN, to file worthless resolutions to make Israel look bad uh, as far as, as putting out a resolution from the United States for the ceasefire just to get the other countries to vote, and most of the ones that are on the Security Council have ties to Muslim nations in it. And you even got China and, and Russia involved in this, and they're they're sitting there trying to decide whether they, which side they're playing on the game, who they supply this and that to. So it's very interesting, but it's more of a mudsling than it is worried about the actual things that go on in a mosque. This is saving face. For Biden, in case something goes on that he can make it on through the Democrat National Convention and get to the end and, and try to run for president. I'll be surprised that it happens. That's why I think the damage control, and he may end up being the sacrificial lamb at the convention to make this happen, but the process has already started. Now, this is Jeff McNeely. This is looking from 30,000 feet. But this is what I see and why I see it. So if not, why does Chuck Schumer come out and basically say that uh, Netanyahu's uh, administration uh, needs to be replaced? He thinks uh, it's time for that. And right in the middle of a war, why would you do that? We're supposed to be their strongest ally. So this is kind of foretelling, folks. Very foretelling. A uh, lot of issues. A lot of things. Um we're getting ready to go to our second part of our show here. So this whole type, we got Addison McDowell coming on. But, you know, they always say in politics, nothing happens. It's planned. The plan's afoot, y'all. The plan is afoot. So stay tuned. Come on back for the second part of the show. Have Addison McDowell on here. More Taking Care of Iredell with North Carolina Representative Jeff McNeely is coming up on 105. 105-
Taking Care of Iredell continues. Here's your host, NC Representative Jeff McNeely on 105.9, 100.7 WSIC. All right, back here with the second half of the show. We got our guest online. Let's see if we can bring him up. Joe, let him come. Hey, is this Addison? Yes, sir. Or should I say Congressman McDowell? Let me get the right terminology here. Well, not not yet. Not yet, but 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 close. You have nobody running against you in the fall. No Democrat signed up for the seat. So after the primary was over with and a few odds and ends, it looks like you're just waiting your time out here. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. All right. Well, you know, I, Addison, I've known you for a little while now. We, we've we actually sat in the duck blinds together, so that's how you really get to know somebody. When two people have a gun on each other, you know, you get to talk a whole lot about things. So anyway, uh, tell us a little bit about who Addison McDowell is. Tell us family. Tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about you so yeah. people out there can hear. He's not going to necessarily be our congressman, but he is going to be a close by congressman and a good friend and ally. So tell us a little bit about who Addison Ooh. McDowell is. Yeah, so I, I grew up uh, the son of a preacher, uh, and, and we grew up in Davidson County. And uh, I have uh, a, an older brother. I had a younger brother who we lost to, to fentanyl poisoning. I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, uh, yeah I got got two brothers, and uh, we grew up in Davidson County. I, I played high school football at North Davidson, but uh, went to went to college at Charlotte, and I met my wife there. So if my degree was worthless at least i paid to to get my wife but there you go um you know we've got we've got a baby uh one-year-old daughter she, she was born on tax day so uh I, she's almost a year old and, and i look forward to uh, taking uh, a percentage of her birthday money and explaining what the democrats do to her father yeah uh, do that year. do that and, and now you have a write-off too so there you go you got another dependent That's right. so there you go so, so you got that, uh, and as far as work career, I know you worked in one of the, uh, I think you worked in one of the congressional offices. Was it Ted Budd, or who did you work for? Yes, sir. So I spent some time in, in Congressman Richard Hudson's, Hudson's. office uh, for a year, and then I spent about four years with uh, now Senator Ted Budd. Yep, yep. So, so, so you've been to Washington. You've seen it. Excuse me. You understand how the, the process works. So, And then, and then sure. you come back and... And you've been with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield doing lobby work. Is that, that, that is there anybody else or just them? Yeah, it's been, it's been a year with them. Yes, sir. All right. I, I, we always remember about the time that you they hired you, Addison, as when uh, all of a sudden Dale Falwell come up and took the uh, state health plan away from them. we all. You know, that, it was what within about a week or so. And we're like, that gum, Addison. What did you do? Yeah. Well, hey, I, you can't blame me. It wasn't my fault. But. Uh, <laughs> That, that that was that was right after me. <laughs> well, let let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What made you want to run for Congress? You're uh, you're sure. you're still a young man, uh, in in your thirties, and and just this there. So, what made you decide to want to run for Congress? Because that's a big jump. Never never been elected to anything sure. that I know of. Have you? No, sir. Well, there you go. So, yeah. So, well, you know, I, I started getting some calls. Um, uh, about uh, sometime around Halloween, I remember that. But I started getting calls asking me if I knew of anybody that wanted to run or if I was interested in it. And uh, you know, I, I initially said no, uh, and and primarily because my wife said no uh, at first. But um, you know, I, I I looked at it and and I thought that okay, you know, I think I'm qualified for this, and I think I'd do a great job. Uh, but what really drove me to want to do it was my little brother. Uh, who I said, you know, we lost him to fentanyl poisoning. And uh, that was something that, you know, if I could make a difference on that issue, which the southern border uh, being wide open is kind of what I'm referencing. Like, if I can make a difference on that issue, I want to do it. Uh, and so that's that's kind of what led me to get into the race uh, the most. Uh, but, I mean, you know, I, I love where I'm from, and I, I love the people there, and I love – uh, the district and it's got a lot to offer. And, and I thought, you know, I, I know I can represent them well. And I think out of the crowd that's formed, I think I'm the best to do it. Uh, and so we, we jumped in. Well, now, and, and let me ask you this too, a little bit. Um, I, I know Mark Walker was like 
come in second in the primary. Bo Hines was in that primary also, correct? Yes, sir, he was. All right. And, and, and you know, there, the, a lot of people don't understand this. I, I don't really like this provision. I kind of get it because I do know lines change and with, with uh, congressional districts more so than with, like, House representative and House Senate in North Carolina. The lines do move with the uh, uh, when we do the census. So uh, you had a quite a crowded field. How many people were on the Republican side? Seven, eight, nine? There was six in my race. Okay, six. Uh, Maybe it's is, totally. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, six, like that, that's not a lot compared to oh, yeah. you know, the 13. They've got 13. When Ted Budd first ran, they had 16. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I felt lucky that there was only six. Yeah. So, but you ended up being the top vote getter, correct? Yes, sir. So that so that's pretty good. And, and of course, the reason I brought up Bo Hines, Bo's ran in every district just about in the state. It feels like, and I don't think he's hardly thirty yet, but he's been around anyway. So he sure. he went shopping in that district because there wasn't an incumbent. And and now I, I guess the incumbent was uh, Kathy was it Kathy Manning was the incumbent there. Yes, sir. So I mean, kind of. It was a, it was a mix of three congressional districts, but she was the incumbent. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it was part of Dan Bishop's seat, part of Congresswoman Fox's seat, part of Manning's seat. Uh, but when they redrew it, she was the incumbent for that that seat, um, and she she elected not to run again. Yeah, they they felt like the lines were so crooked, and and I really was surprised because I thought that you know the way the best way to prove that the the lines weren't drawn right, that it was gerrymandered is to run and, and, and lose. But I guess it was more gracious for them to just not run at all and, and try to bring that up in a court case later, that it was so bad they knew not to run. Sure. But I, 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 we all know that that's not true. We all know that, sure. that it's not. That's just, that's just how the game they're wanting to play to throw the whole thing out. And, and it's not going to get anywhere. And I think they realize that, but you know, that's, that's, that's the cry they're going to make. So, you know, so let's talk a little bit about the race. Let's talk mm-hmm. about, let's talk about the Trump endorsement first. Cause that was huge. Yeah. That was huge in my opinion for you in that, in that district. Absolutely. It definitely was. And, and so tell us a little bit about how that came about. I know y'all probably, y'all made a trip down to Mar-a-Lago and, we did. and so tell us a little bit about what all went on or what, whatever you, what you can tell. I know a lot of things happen sure. you can't tell, but tell us what you can tell about getting well, that because yeah. that, that well, was a big thing. Yeah. Sure. Well, I and mean, it was, and that was kind of a, um, you know, it was a long shot I thought, but, um, you know, we, we, uh, we got a meeting with them on the books and we went down there and, um, you know, I pitched initially, I pitched, uh, Susie Wiles, his campaign manager. Uh, she was, who was in the room first. I pitched her and, and she was all in. I was like, okay. So then Trump comes into the room and I, I didn't know if, you know, we would meet with him for five minutes or however long it would be. We wound up sitting with him for about an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, I'm still tired from that <laughs> meeting, but, um, you know, it was, it was something. And we went kind of all over the map. Um, and, and we talked, uh, you know, a little bit about the race, um, and, and who, uh, who was in the race at that point and, and why that I thought I was the best one out of that group. Uh, and by the end he agreed with me, uh, on that assessment and decided that he was going to endorse me in the race. Um, and so that, that came out the next day. Um, but you know, the meeting went so long that, that, you know, I I missed my flight to come back home and there's not a ton of commercial air traffic, uh, going to and from Palm beach. Yeah. Uh, a lot of private planes. So, you know, I'm stuck there overnight trying to get home. And so he, he wound up doing it the next day at about 4 PM. So I had time to get home, but, uh, it was, it was pretty surreal. Um, I, I knew my life was about to change. Well, and, and you know, I, if I'm not mistaken, the last time that Bo ran, of course it was over in the, like the fourth district or fifth, I can't remember. It was on the Eastern side of North Carolina, uh, Trump endorsed him. And, and he so, did. uh, so this was kind of huge with, uh, with Bo being in the race for you to get it, not him. 
because you sure. would think maybe so that, that they would re, you know he'd re up that again. So I I thought that was pretty impressive. Well, well, you know, I I think a lot of people thought that, and I think Bo probably thought that. Yeah. Um, but you know, we went in with a a very detailed kind of pitch to the president on this is why we don't think that he can win, and it turns out we were right because he he came in fourth. Yeah. Uh, fourth part. But, you know, I, I don't know what a Trump endorsement would have done to make that differently, but uh, w- we didn't think there was enough runway and enough time for him to, you know, get around. Uh, we just didn't think he could win, and, and we thought we could, uh, and, and President Trump agreed with us. Well, you know, like I said, when you're not from the district, well, then you got to figure out all the players. And he had he had already figured out the players in another district before that. So, you yeah. know, it, it, it's not easy. Uh, I, I believe in these times like this, uh, when it even got a little bit of while to think about it, you still got to have a grassroots effort. And y'all being from there know everybody, uh, at least in Davidson County and probably a lot of the surrounding counties too. It was definitely a, an advantage for y'all being from the area, and I usually see whoever lives in the area more than likely has got a real good chance of winning unless money just comes into play. Absolutely. Well, and that was the thing, Jeff, like money did come into play. Yeah, um, always and, does. But, you know, and it did, but we it wasn't us. We didn't have it. Yeah. Um, you know, we spent, we spent less than the person that came in second, third, and fourth. Wow. All right, well, we got to take a hard break here, so just hold tight, Addison, we'll bring you back in. So just be with us, folks. Stay tuned. We're going to talk with Addison some more on this campaign. Stay with us. We'll have more Taking Care of Iredell with NC Representative Jeff McNeely after these messages on 105.9 
congressman, so that was interesting. But Mark Walker had a lot of different things working against him, and and definitely one of them was the Trump factor. Don't know how much you can talk about that or not, but uh, Mark Walker was never going to get Trump's endorsement. That's what I believe. Well, you know, we uh, all I know is that when we went to Mar-a-Lago, we pitched why we were the best candidate, and and President Trump agreed with that. Uh, but you know, the 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 Trump endorsement was amazing, and it, it, that was if we were able to get that message out, we win, no no question. Uh, but the problem was we didn't have a lot of runway. This was a short primary. Oh yeah, it uh, comes quick in March. Oh yeah, and so it was a short, less than three months. And so we had, you know, I'd never made a fundraising call before. I had to start raising money. I don't come for money. So, um, you know, that was something that, that Pat McCrory said this about me on his radio show. I thought it was interesting. He said uh, his dad is rich. That's why he got the Trump endorsement. <laughs> like, my dad's a preacher. What are you talking about? <laughs> but uh, he's rich in the spirit, I guess. There you, but, go. There you uh, go. Rich in blessings. We, we didn't have any money. And so it was the grassroots work that we did where we just hustled. We outworked everybody. Um, you know, we we knocked on like over five thousand doors on election day. We had a hundred people at different precincts um, passing out stuff, and you know, I, I think that that was uh, at the end of the day, we we worked until the very last second, and that's why we got got first on election day. Well, I, I was impressed, uh, and and folks, Addison actually come over to, to Idle County to Statesville, and there was a little small fundraiser we had here for him. That not, nothing huge. I wish we could have done more, but you know, not really our district. But hey, I, just like always, it takes everybody to move the ball. Uh, one person can't pick it up and run. It takes everybody to move the ball. So when there's something that needs to be done for North Carolina or for Idle County, even here's somebody I know that I can pick up the phone and give a call to. You know, I really wanted my roommate, sure. uh, Gray Mills, to pull it off in our district. Didn't happen. Talked with Pat Harrigan over the weekend at the um, the, the county convention, and, and, and I got no problems with Pat. I think Pat's going to do a fine job. I seem like a good man. I, I just don't, you know, necessarily have the ability to pick up the phone and talk to him like I would Gray Mills. And, and so I do have that with you, and so I appreciate that. Sure. And do not delete my number or block it. That's all I ask. But anyway, uh, now, you know, it was close enough where there could have been a runoff. What made you think uh, or wonder what got in Walker's head it just wasn't yeah. willing to put up the fight? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. And, and I think that, um, you know, he apparently was offered something by President Trump to, to uh, come work for his campaign, and, and that's great. Um, but, you know, we were ready to go, and, and we immediately – um, you know, my poor wife, she, she didn't want two more months of this, uh, but uh, neither did I, but you know, we were ready to go. We started working the very next morning on, okay, we got to, you know, we know because of how financial disclosures work, we know everyone that has donated to him. Um, and so we just started calling those people yeah. and picking them off. And, and, you know, we, we just did everything we could so that he wouldn't even want to try. Um, and you know, it, as it turns out, you know, president Trump and him are going to work together on, on his campaign and that's great. Uh, but we're focused on the future now and we want to unify the party. Uh, and we want to get, you know, as many Republicans elected as we can. Like, look, I still have to live here, even though I'm going to go work in Washington, I still have to live in North Carolina. Oh yeah. Uh, and I want to, I want to keep the super majority. So, you know, for us now, because I don't have a general election opponent, um, you know, we're going to work on getting as many Republicans elected as we can. Well, I, I tell you what, did, keep in contact with us. We'll put you at a poll working somewhere someday. So just trust us. We will. Yes, sir. So, so, you know, we talked a little bit here. We got about, Oh, I don't know, about six minutes or so to go. You're on your way. Going to be in Washington. It's just a matter of time. You talked about fentanyl. What committees are you looking at, Addison? What are you thinking? What are you thinking you'd yeah, like to do? Where's your, where's your strong suits? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I worked for a member for uh, three years that was on the Financial Services Committee, yeah. and North Carolina has historically had uh, members r representing them on that committee, um, you know, and, and with Chairman McHenry uh, retiring at the end of Congress uh, and Wiley Nickel 
doing whatever Wiley Nichols is going to do next. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're not going to have anybody on that committee. And North Carolina is a, a financial services hub, whether it be the fintech side or uh, the banking side yeah. or the cryptocurrency side. I mean, we, we need representation on that committee. And, and having worked for a member that was on that committee, I think it'd be a good fit. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, we didn't give a lot of thought to – what happens after we win? That's right. Everything we did was how do we win? One day at a time. Um, and let's get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you know, we're, we're looking at that now. Um, and so as far as committees go, you know, I'm open. Uh, but I think North Carolina does need representation on the financial services committee. Um, but, you know, in terms of like what we want to do, I mean, securing the borders is the number one priority yeah. for everyone that we talk to. And there wasn't really a close second. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just want to get up there and make a difference on that issue uh, first and foremost. But, you know, really, I just want to listen to what the people from the 6th District want. Well, and and I got to feel like that, you know, they, they always say there's just a, a pipeline from the southern from the southern border to North Carolina in general. Uh, they, they, they seem like somehow or another they cross that border and within 48 hours. They're somewhere in our state, I almost feel like. Now, I know they go to other states and they do other things, but we're one of the popular destination places. And one of the reasons is we're, sure. we're fairly easy to get a driver's license here. And and, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to, to kind of figure out a way to shut that down somewhat to, to make it a little more difficult. At least, least be, have papers. You can't be illegal and get it. I know they're sharing each other's papers sure. and IDs and different things, and, and it's on and on and on. Uh, we've got to be able to do a better job, and it may be one of those things where they have to show they've been here X amount of months with some kind of a older power bills. I don't know. That's my job. i got to work on that. Your job is build a wall, build something, enforce something, or do something. It's chaotic. Are you thinking about trying to take a trip down there and just see for yourself what all's going on. I don't know if you really need to. You can pretty much tell from yeah. here even how bad it is, but just curious. Yeah. Well, I, so I've actually I've been down there before. Okay. And, and it was it was a long time ago, um, but you you can still see it then. But I mean, something that Sheriff Campbell and I we go way back. Something that he told me before everyone else was saying it was, look, every county in North Carolina is now a border county. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, you know, yeah, we got an open border. We need to secure the border. We also have to think about all the people that are already here yeah. and given the law enforcement in, in my district and in this state, what they need to combat the people that are already here that don't need to be here. And, you know, I talked earlier in the show, don't know if you were listening or not, probably not, but, you know, that over there in Greensboro, which may end up being part of your district, you got anything in, mm-hmm. in Guilford? I do it, that the what you're talking about. I think is just outside. Okay, uh, didn't know, but, but it's on everybody's radar. Hudson's involved, sure. Tillis, Bud, all of them. Our whole delegation. I mean, you know, here we are. We 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 basically got a sanctuary situation in North Carolina. The one that we know about. How many we don't sure. know about uh, scares sure. me because they're they're getting help and they're here. I mean, I I, I see all kind of Absolutely. different different things going on and everybody keeps saying well y'all were funding them i said well right now i guarantee you we ain't funding nothing from the state's perspective this is all federal and it's all through the executive branch it's not even being appropriated it's just coming it's like somebody's got an open checkbook and can write any number they want and they are so you know all right the fentanyl situation we got about two minutes to talk about it real quick and i know that hits home to you um you know, maybe Homeland Security is a different committee that you may want to look at. I don't know. You tell us. Uh, what well, I, what no, ideas absolutely. do you have? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're seeing ideas that are great that are getting shut down by the Democrats uh, and, and by Joe Biden. And it's, you know, like Senator Bud, one of the things that he was pushing, that, you know, as they were passing this giant budget or whatever, was an amendment that he wanted uh, that would say, if you are an illegal immigrant that uh, commits a certain crime, you immediately get deported. And the Democrats said, absolutely not. And I have a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, because that is common sense. You know, and and the bad thing, too, is we got to figure out a way once we deport them to not let them get back in here two weeks later. 
It seems like it's just sure. a merry-go-round down there. So once again, got to figure out some way. I don't know how. It's a long border. It's a big border. But, hey, you know, we started a wall and then started selling the pieces off fast as we mm-hmm. can before we could ever put it on. So um, we're down here. We got about 30 seconds left. Uh, anything you want to say the last little bit, Addison? Well, if we want to secure the border, it starts with getting President Trump elected in November. Amen. Uh, and, and defeating Joe Biden. So that, you know, I would encourage people to get out and vote. Uh, you, you've seen what, what life under President Trump looks like and what life under Joe Biden looks like. And I think uh, life under President Trump was much better, much safer, uh, and, and much cheaper. Uh, and so let's, let's get out and elect him in November. All right. Well, Addison, uh, congratulations again. Glad to have you on the show. Good luck. If I can help you anyway, let me know, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. You got it. Thank All you. Right. Yep. Pre- All right, folks. Let's go ahead and we'll say our blessing here, our prayer. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for all you do. Lord, we pray that uh, we do get this country turned around and we secure our borders and we protect our people and we watch over them. And dear Lord, just give us wisdom and knowledge. Be with us in all we do. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, folks, take care. See ya. You've been listening to North Carolina Representative Jeff McNeely. Join Jeff again next Monday morning at 1105 for Taking Care of Iredell on News Talk WSIC.